The new water control structures function much like dams, retaining water in lake-like impoundments called pools. When the canal was completed, it appeared that engineering had triumphed over nature. The Kissimmee had been tamed. Towns and cities no longer felt the threat of floodwaters. Farms and ranches expanded on land made suddenly available by the drained floodplains. And then other things began to change. A vast mosaic of life severed from the nurturing embrace of a once pristine river and its wetlands, began to disappear. After numerous studies, researchers confirmed what seasoned river hands already knew. Channelization had delivered a devastating blow to wildlife. The loss was staggering. Wintering waterfowl had declined by 92 percent. Bald eagle territories decreased by 72 percent. And wading birds, once a wild palette of color throughout the river's shallows and marshes, were replaced by the ubiquitous cattle egret. In 1971, the U.S. Corps of Engineers completed final work on the C-38 canal and turned over management responsibilities to the South Florida Water Management District. Agency scientists confirmed not only had floodplain-dependent wildlife been diminished, but that the quality of the river water had been degraded. Each of us who measure dissolved oxygen realize uh, very quickly that dissolved oxygen is one of the major limiting factors to the fish community in the channelized Kissimmee River C-38 system. The channelized system, again, acts more like a, a, a series of reservoirs, or the pools of the system act like more reservoirs or lakes than it does a flowing river. The lack of flow and the increased summer temperatures compound to cause um, a, a negative effect on the fish community by depleting dissolved oxygen in the water column. Public concern over the declining condition of the Kissimmee River Basin rose from a small grassroots movement to a roar heard in the highest offices of the state. We had a beautiful river. The channelization took it away from us and the general public as a whole wanted it back. I could not have done this thing alone. I had to have public support and we had it. The general public overwhelmingly supported the restoration. For the next 12 years, Federal and state agencies studied and conducted tests to determine how best to re-establish the river's lost values. The answer was here. In the 53-mile-long pile of spoil, the dredges deposited as they excavated the canal. If the river was damaged by excavation, scientists reasoned, why not, in simplest terms, simply take the spoil and shovel it back in? The Kissimmee River Restoration Plan is based upon over 20 years of scientific study. These studies have shown that the way to restore the integrity of this system is to reestablish the physical form and the hydrology of the river and floodplain. The only way to do this is to fill in a long, continuous reach of the canal. But would the plan work? And if some of the canal could be backfilled and the abandoned floodplain reflooded, could flood control still be maintained? To simulate the effects of backfilling, three small dams, called weirs, were constructed at strategic points along a 12-mile stretch of the canal. The weirs partially diverted the flow through adjacent remnant channels and over a small portion of the river's original floodplain. This created somewhat of a microcosm of the historical river floodplain system. The South Florida Water Management District, the Department of Environmental Protection, and the Florida Game and Freshwater Fish Commission monitored the project from 1984 to 1990. From an ecological perspective, the key result of the demonstration project was to show the feasibility of restoring biological resources. Floodplain wetlands were reestablished, and wading bird and waterfowl utilization of the demonstration project area was higher than in any portion of the channelized system. 
An essential question remained unanswered. Flood control. If a significant portion of the canal was backfilled, opponents asked, what would happen under extremely wet or hurricane conditions? Would the catastrophic events of the 1940s and the 1950s return to haunt Central Florida? In the late 1980s, high discharge tests were carried out to determine how a dechannelized Kissimmee would be affected under heavy flows. There were tests done during the demonstration project that were called high flow discharge tests. Essentially, this simulated a large storm event in the valley and in the chain of lakes. Can we get the water out of the chain of lakes and how does the river floodplain respond and getting the water out of the river floodplain? The results of that high discharge test gave us clear information that showed that you could maintain flood protection and restore the river floodplain ecosystem. Though many restoration alternatives were considered, the final endorsement for backfilling came from a three-year research project carried out by the University of California. Conducted under the supervision of Dr. H.W. Shen, a world-renowned expert in sedimentation and environmental river mechanics, detailed topographical models combined with computer analyses revealed that backfill material would remain in place. We've done a great deal of research um, in uh, both the abstract and in the laboratory, uh, building a, a test model at Berkeley, uh, and also in the uh, test weirs to determine what would happen uh, as we uh, filled in the river channel. Uh, those results, as well as the practical results from the 1,000-foot test fill, uh, have shown us that the river is very capable of healing itself. Our expectations uh, have been fulfilled uh, and then some. Thirty years had passed since the giant dredges began their march up the Kissimmee. All the pieces were now coming together for an attempt to turn back the clock. In 1992, the Corps of Engineers agreed to participate with the state of Florida in a comprehensive environmental restoration plan for the Kissimmee River ecosystem. The plan was funded by the Water Resources Development Act, enabling the federal government and the state of Florida to equally share the cost of restoration. The total cost is expected to reach $380 million in 1992 dollars. The plan contains two major dependent components. At the headwaters of the river, more than 20,000 acres of land surrounding the upper chain of lakes will be purchased to increase water storage capacity by raising lake levels. The existing water control structure that regulates flows from the lakes to the river will be modified to allow a continuous flow and higher discharges. Just as the flow from a hole in the bottom of a bucket varies depending on the amount of water in the bucket, river inflows will be allowed to fluctuate with lake levels. On the central portion of the channelized system, some 22 miles of the canal will be filled. Nine miles of former river channel will be re-excavated. And two of the six water control structures will be removed. Over a period of 15 years, more than 40 square miles of floodplain ecosystem will be restored. What's really unique about this project is that it's scientifically based and scientifically driven the goal of restoring the ecological integrity of the river floodplain ecosystem. To achieve that, though, you have to restore the physical form and the historic hydrology of the system. And those are clearly engineering design techniques. So the, the two have to meld together to create a, an achievable restoration project.